appreciate it. Much appreciated. So, welcome everyone to the Smart City and Utilities panel. We wanted to address it from a slightly different angle and look at how we can improve productivity in cities generally. And improving productivity is a, uh, a difficult challenge that requires improving access to work, uh, adapting for climate change, developing new economic centers, and in generally, improving the effectiveness and efficiency of all the stakeholders within a city. And today, we wanted to kind of address some topics like what actually is a smart city, because we hear this term and no one ever actually really explains it in depth, let's say. And how can we address the core question, which is how do smart cities improve productivity? What are the blockers to smart cities and how can we grease the wheels to get them out there? And if we have time, I kind of look at the future and, and what would be the, uh, the, the project for smart cities that we want to see implemented. So welcome to my panelists. Joining me today is Annalena Zotman, who's vice chair of the Business Development Committee at the Motor License and Business Development Manager at Deal Metering. So no one better to help us make that link between smart city and utilities. Jose Perez, who's product owner at Rack Wireless, this is well known for its uh, IoT hardware in the market. And when it comes to the technical aspects or the nuts and bolts of IoT, I don't think there's anyone better. And Noman Ahmed, who is the founder and CEO of Smart Ends, who are a data, a data AI driven waste and recycling management solution company and has many real world projects out in the field uh, and has delivered actual IoT solutions to cities all over Europe, right? Yeah. Good, so welcome everyone. And hopefully we can address some of these topics. Now, as I mentioned, smart cities, we hear it a lot. Uh, I guess everyone has a different interpretation of what a smart city is. So maybe Annalena and the rest of the panel can give us an overview uh, what do you perceive when we talk about the world smart city? Of course. Um, so yeah, especially for us as Demetering, it's not just it, collecting data. Um, so for us, of course, the customer is the smart utility. Um, but creating value out of the data is for us really the key. Um, collecting data is, I would say, kind of easy, of course, with a network. Mm -hmm. But having the right ideas, use cases behind your um, yeah, data makes you smart and makes then also the city and the utility, of course, smart. I see. So it's really making cities more a connected entity, right? And getting data, getting data from those yeah. connected infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, and yourself? Yeah, to be honest, I think one of the reasons why we hate the, the word smart city is because we don't know what it means. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as a citizen, it might mean one thing. As a government, another one is uh, press would think about a different thing. Um, as a citizen, I would like to live in a livable city, mm. not a smart city. I want to live in somewhere with, like here with these gardens where the river used to be, right? It's a great place to be. Absolutely. That's, that's what for me would be smart. So how do we get into that point? IoT might help, but um, focusing on the goal makes more sense than just trying to fit something into the word smart city for me. Mm. It's a good point. I mean, you know, many cities uh, are always trying to be getting smarter, right? You look at Valencia and it has a kind of grid-based street system. And at the time, that was a new smart way to build cities, right? And now we're just looking at it through the lens of IoT, making that next step in smartness. Right. And yourself, no man. So I think smart city is a city where different services are connected in a way that a lot of data is gathered and providing some actionable information to the city uh, professionals who are taking care of the services to improve the life of citizens. And also I think uh, sustainability should be the core of uh, smart cities to improve the life and increase sustainability. Yeah. I think that uh, leads nicely onto our next question because like, you know, why? Why are we doing smart cities? Who do you guys think is like, should be the main beneficiaries from us implementing smart city solutions? <laughs> yeah, so let me answer that. Uh, from our perspective, of course, um, when it comes to smart cities, um, smart utilities are, li okay, utilities mostly are not that smart at the beginning, of course, mm. but um, utilities are often an entry point in that discussions. So when you start talking about, um, yeah, about a network in a specific area, a specific city, then smart metering is always a good entry point because it's already a mass application. So the, the ROI of a network is already there when you're doing 
um, metering applications. And this is more or less, let's say, um, a good starting point, but you can also create value out of it. Mm -hmm. So when, when, when the utility is working together here with the city, then they can create together value for the citizens, like you said. Yeah, yeah. absolutely agree. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's common in all, maybe all the, the different smart city ex examples we can think of, utilities have driven the implementation. Um, also, complying with, with regulations has been another big uh, motor for that, right? Especially in Europe, I guess. Um, yeah, but yeah, maybe that's, that's a major two points where to start. Yeah, and I guess uh, through the lens of utilities, you know, the citizens can't really see and feel it necessarily, right? But they feel it when they get the billing and it's yeah, actually, that's actually accurate for the first time and so on, right? Yeah, that's maybe one of the things with utilities. Um, if they are, if, if these infrastructure meant for utilities, for smart cities, for water management, uh, waste management, are turned into silos, then that doesn't come into the smart city ecosystem. Yeah. It's just a project. So making it open or making it available to other projects, it's really important for a smart city to, to really be smart, to be, really have this potential. And it's, uh, it is all definitely interconnected, right? It's like a domino effect. If you can save some costs in one area city, then you can use that budget to invest in area, other areas. And if certain sectors are causing more costs, then you have to take a deficit from someone yeah, else, right? Sure. So all of these will hopefully link to a better standard of living for the people who live in these cities, yeah? yeah. Awesome. And um, then let's address that main question then. So, how have you guys seen that IoT has helped productivity within a city? Is there a particular like, uh, use case that you've come across that's, that's driven better efficiency? You know, yes, I, well. we have developed quite some interesting uh, use cases on smart cities where it improves the productivity and reduces cost. For example, if you mount uh, smart sensors on garbage bins around the city, and then instead of a garbage truck collecting every bin on a schedule, if you are collecting the bins based upon uh, data that this bin is full, the next one is empty, then uh, companies and cities who have adopted this type of system, they can save up to 40, 50% cost. And in some very used, good use cases, we have seen that if you are using a fleet of 10 trucks, you might not need to use 10 trucks. You might be good with five trucks. Mm -hmm. A lot of cities have, uh, after adopting smart waste management uh, solutions, they have reduced the size of their fleet. Yeah, and I guess uh, we were talking earlier, like around during the COVID, uh, the waste piling up on the streets and how it was like affecting not just the yeah, cleanliness and hygiene, but the kind of political opinion of how the city is being run and so on, yeah. right? So yeah. it can make a big impact there. And maybe there's some city examples that you were, you were talking about who have already implemented these types of solutions. Yeah, definitely. So in Edinburgh, in Scotland, we deployed 11,000 public bins with smart sensors. And this is helping the city council to collect more efficiently. They are saving quite a lot of costs on the collection. Also, uh, nowadays, it's also difficult to find people who want to collect the waste. So basically, automation is not killing the jobs. Automation is improving the quality of your job. Mm. So they have saved quite some uh, um, cost on the collections. And also, um, they are trying to identify which areas in the city are high traffic areas, which are low traffic areas, and how we need to uh, put our bins in a different formation so that we put more bins at the city centers where more garbage is collected, bins are our, always overflowing, and less bins are needed in the other areas where bins are normally empty. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is a great uh, primary use case, let's say, to put actual IoT in the hands of the, of the city operators to see how it's working, right? Yeah. And I guess uh, improving and speeding up things is one approach, but also reducing the inefficiency, right? And we have, let's say, the integration of many different systems. How can like uh, LP1s or IoT help streamline the integration of different departments within a city? Yeah, uh, you yeah. can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. No, I, would like, I was thinking about his answer, and, and it's true. Um, and one of the things I would like to say about IoT is that it's, it's really something that's at hand for most people, for most cities. Mm. Uh, there are some constraints, there are decisions to take that are hard to take because most people is not uh, ready to take them. They don't have the technological uh, knowledge to take them. We have to make that easier for them. 
but it's at hand. It's something that they can do. And we've seen it not in big cities, like examples he can, he can say. I've seen it in small cities or even mm -hmm. towns. You can deploy, you can town your, your town into smart town. Yeah. Uh, 10,000 people, you can do that. And, and I've seen it. And, and sometimes it's driven by inefficiencies. I have one example near Barcelona. It's a really small town. And we have a problem in Catalonia in general. I think it's Spain in general. We had a big drop during the last two, three years. And at the same time, the average leakage of water in our pipes is about 30, 40 percent. So that's kind of, doesn't make sense. How do we solve that? The small cities, small uh, towns have the tools to do it now mm. with IoT. And that's something that is really interesting. And that's maybe what is turning the IoT booth from mm. 10 years ago into some reality <laughs> now. And we can do it. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, actually the smaller cities, in a sense, have an advantage, right? They, you know, not as complex, not so massive. True. That's true. Too. They can implement a bit quicker, like a startup, in a sense, compared to yeah, maybe like a, a POC sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like well, I, I, I would and like to add to this point. In these small cities, uh, it, there is like less barrier to entry. For yeah. a very large city, it's difficult to enter a talk. Where they have to put a public tender in place. But with small towns, you can show them the benefit and you can start very quickly. Yeah, true. Yeah. But that's because it's something that's available now. Yeah. It was not 10 years ago. They Definitely. Yeah. Not even think about it. When Barcelona was the smart city of the world, it is not. <laughs> but when, when it was, uh, it was because it was huge and lots of resources into that. Yeah. Yeah. And Most I, cities couldn't do that. And I guess we see in some of the, uh, there's a few stories like in a few German cities where you have the water utility and the energy utility and they don't necessarily work together and they deploy different parallel systems and in the end you end up with a city with 10 different networks for 10 different solutions and there's a, a lack of integration among them. I mean, maybe utilities is kind of a key there, right? Absolutely. Um, so for utilities, it's often the case that they um, don't know about technologies because it's not their, let's say, um, former knowledge and their former business, of course. So they, they came from the, the, the time where they sent out cards and you were filling in your meter value and then they getting it back and then you get once per year an invoice. So for them, the times are shifting, of course. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's really important to have a technology which is opening not just, let's say, um, that metering case, it, which is opening, for example, also the leakage um, detection, um, which is really important, of course. And um, here, they need an interoperable system. They need a system which works not just for them, maybe also for other um, smart um, city um, use cases, mm -hmm. whatever. And for example, what we see stepwise is if the utilities are the owner of the networks, then they search for further business opportunities. So they mm -hmm. came from the point that they were in the past purely a water supplier. They come, they come to the point that they are also in future then more and more a data as a service supplier. Yeah. So for them, it's really, really important to be here on a system which is future-proof and interoperable. Yeah, and I think I like that idea of uh, other use cases piggybacking on this kind of on this on this network, right? Because you know, there's certain use cases that are not necessarily high volume. You may only need a thousand sensors across the whole city, but that's not enough uh, value to commercially to justify putting a hundred gateways across the city, not, right? Yeah. So we can all connect these systems, and I guess that's always been the dream to to get to. And if we can integrate as few platforms together, even better. And, how about, let's say, the hardware side? Do we, what's, the, what's required or involved to actually put out across a city to build this network? So I think the key point here is to make, so to, to be able to tell the customer, the city, that whatever hardware they buy, they have to make sure that this is interoperable. It's something that they can use now for the use case. Mm -hmm. and they will be able to use it in 10 years from now. Cities are slow at taking decisions because they're not ready because they, they deal with public money, and that always makes them, I don't know, <laughs> more aware of uh, the importance of their decisions, whatever, whatever the reasons. Yeah. Um, they want to make sure that whatever they choose, it's going to be there for the next 10, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we can provide not only the hardware, the platform, the, the infrastructure that's going to be able to upgrade, that's going to be able to cope with future technologies. Yeah, I think that's a kind of 
message that's really cut through in the last few years that all of us and the companies we work with are using an open standard, right? And Absolutely. cities who implement that particular technology are not just limited to a proprietary system to the companies provide them, but can go out into the market and source hundreds of solutions from, from many different companies. Sure. So let's say we've got the uh, mayor of Valencia here today or someone else from who's running a city. What would be like the blockers that you think need to be removed or what could be help them help them actually implement a smart city? Actually, I think um, the biggest blocker sometimes in utility companies, uh, they are very old fashioned. They are very afraid of changing the ways they are working for the last 50 years. Uh, so the key um, point here is to show them the benefit and show them, you know, this technology is there to help them do their job more efficiently. Mm. And um, but nowadays what we have seen also in all cities, there are like uh, innovation managers, uh, who are looking after these type of innovations. So the key point is to uh, show them the benefit and then also talk to the people who are doing the job yeah. and show them how this will be useful for their job. Yeah, I think uh, one of the, the biggest like, uh, blockers I, I, I heard was like, just really the, 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 the workforce who are out there who are maybe doing the, the garbage waste pickup and so yeah. on and changing the way they have to... Handle their, handle their daily job, right? Implementing the new, these new strategies and bringing yeah. them along yeah. with us, for let's say. And the other side, I guess, is like the decision makers or the people who have to actually yeah. implement these solutions, right? So Deal Meeting, for example, do a really nice workshops with like the, the cities and the communities, right? Tell us a bit about that and, and what's the aim there. So for us, it's really the key, I would say, to educate. Um, I think it's really important to, to um, educate the utilities but may educating them that much that they can also educate then their management and also their workforce so that they can really explain um, their workforce why they need now data, why they need now IoT, because if they don't go that way with the utility, of course, it will be a high hindering factor. And um, this is for us really one of the key things. And what we also do together with um, the utilities um, trying to work on visions so that they are not just thinking about what they can do with this network. They also thinking then to, um, about um, further use cases in the field of IoT, like waste management or pressure monitoring in networks, whatever. So this is really important to, to show them the possibilities because they don't know. Mm. Today, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and and you know, this uh, new cities being built as well, right? And cities that are expanding. Is are we seeing some um, planners or city planners starting to implement IoT from the beginning now? Is it always a retrofit? Or uh, we have seen a few cities in uh, one city in Luxembourg. They are starting to build a smart city concept. Yeah, uh, it's a small town but uh, no, not seen any city who is like starting from this at this moment. See, because yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a, like for the, in, in Saudi, for example, this big neon project, right? Oh, yeah, they're, yeah. they're building hotels with, IO, with LoRaWAN already in the building now, mm -hmm. whereas previously right. we were always going to place and, and putting in the system, right? Well, and my OT. <laughs> and my OT as well, of course, and, and any other protocols. So on that then, what would be, let's say, looking a bit ahead to the future, what would be, um, your vision for a smart city, and maybe as a follow-up question, if you could live in any smart city in the world, which one would you, which one would you go to? <laughs> so I, extra I moved for out from Barcelona eight years ago because <laughs> it was too big for me, so maybe the, the word is not, would I live in a smart city, would I live in a city at all? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, I think, I, think um, I see that for what I'm seeing in, in cities that I work with, um, having a public infrastructure is key. Mm -hmm. So yeah. whatever, if it's a new city or if it's a new city already existing, if they invest, sometimes because they manage their own water, for instance, or waste management, mm -hmm. uh, in they, if they invest in a public infrastructure, then they have the chances to grow more projects on top of it. And that's what I think it's, it's going to be. Instead of having like three, four different networks, yeah. uh, not competing, but just not communicating, mm, yeah. uh, having one or even maybe two, depending on having two different technologies, <laughs> then uh, it, will, it will make more sense uh, for these cities to implement more projects on top of it. Yeah. That's what I see. So. Yeah, and this is, a, this is a big change, right? Being a, I mean, uh, LP1s help that. It help, helps 
cities or, or private organizations to be able to own this infrastructure themselves for the first yeah. time, right? Uh, no, man, you want to make a point? I would like to live in a city where every bin had a brain. <laughs> <laughs> and tells you if you've put something wrong in there, and yeah. reports you if you have. <laughs> nice. And any particular city, maybe Edinburgh, where you can see all your sensors out? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe Edinburgh, because it's uh, already an interesting project we are doing there, yeah. Cool. Okay, sensors and whiskey, sounds good. <laughs> and yourself, Annalena? It uh, doesn't sound <laughs> too bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, well, thank you to the panel, and thank you everyone for listening. I hope it gave uh, good insights and addressed the productivity. And yeah, I welcome Yannick back on the stage to continue Perfect. the program. Thank you, Rob. Awesome, big applause. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Well done.